In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today's Gospel talk about the born blind. And the readings, if um, we have a chance to go through the readings, you will see how dense they are. From the Matin, the Vespers, the liturgy readings, they're, they're dense. Um, so the message for me was a little hard to um, focus, but one verse from the Pauline epistle stood out to me today from Romans 11:29. This is what we're talking about today, which are the God's gifts or God's free gifts and calling are irrevocable. Ataya Allah wa da'watu hiya bila nadama. Um, if you look at the readings, uh, the Gospel of the, the, the Psalm of the Vespers talk about a water that comes out or flows out of a rock. And then the, the Gospel talk about an invitation from Christ to examine the scriptures, talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. And he is pointing something out for them. He says, how can you believe if you're still accepting glory from one another? If you're seeking glory from one another, how can you believe? Tough questions. And then in the psalm of the Matin prayer, of the Matin, uh, we hear the, the psalmist asking God to shine upon us with his face so we may be saved. And then the gospel of the Matin is about the bread of life, the best free gift that anyone can give to anyone, a gift that keeps on giving and it gives life. And then uh, the Pauline epistle talk about the irrevocable gifts and calling. And then the gospel itself talk about the born blind. And of course the Catholic epistle talk about how to love. And the praxis or the acts talk about the gift of accepting the Holy Spirit without even the, the disciple have any say in this. So it's, it's kind of full meal if you think about it it's it's um it's full of different messages but the message today is that god's free gifts and calling are irrevocable whatever he gives he gives without regret and i don't know if we as human can actually understand this fully Sometimes we do regret after we give because people don't appreciate what we give. I can't say that this is um, not normal. It is normal. We all feel that way sometimes when we help someone or when we offer um, support and then people are indifferent to what we offer to them. But God, in that sense, is different completely on how we perceive him. Whatever he gives, he gives without regret. He gives everything for one purpose, to help us in our salvation. The born blind was a good man. And I'm a big fan of this man. If you don't know that by now, I, I really love this man. He was blind, but he was not uh, without a vision. He was blind, but he was not shallow. He was blind, but he can tell when he see the true light. Um, the born blind life, if you think about it from a logical point of view, uh, Christ said this man was born blind not because of a sin he committed or his parents committed, but for the glory of God may be manifested in his life. So you're going to let me live for 40 years or 30 years or how many ever years blind just to show your glory in my life? Is that fair? You can argue a case that this is not fair. But again, God's work is completely different than how we see things. Paul himself, in the Pauline epistle today, he said his ways are so far from our understandings. So when we try to reason with his ways, it doesn't make sense sometimes. 
but the final result is beyond amazing. This man, if you ask him, the born blind man, would you prefer to be born with eyes and don't experience Jesus' miracle or follow the scenario that's in the Gospel of John? Most likely he would say, I'd rather be born blind and have this interaction with him because without this, without this setup, I wouldn't have this kind of impact of his words on me. It's beautiful. The gifts and the calling. The second birth is a gift from him, which is the baptism, the second birth. And another baptism and another baptism is repentance, is a gift from him. Every time we confess, we put on Christ over and over. We regain his image. His scriptures is a gift. And he invited the scribes and the Pharisees. He said, um, examine the scriptures because you think they have your salvation. And that is another gift. For those who look for the truth and they are blinded by the fake truth that's, that's the world is full of, God gave you the truth in his Bible. But people don't want this truth because it doesn't appeal to their ego. This is the problem. The scribes and the Pharisees, they had the scriptures, but they were blind to it. The born blind had nothing, but he had the sensitivity needed so he can tell this is the word of God. He gave us the light and to shine his face upon us. He still does this with everyone, every day, even those who rejected him. Why? Because his, his gifts and his calling are irrevocable, is without regret. He does this and will keep doing this every day. And if you don't see the love of God in this one action, I don't know then where are you going to see God's love. The bread of life that he gave us on the altar, available for us to participate freely, is another great gift and calling to be united with him and abide in him. The born blind, I circle back to, to him. If this man would listen to what the scribes and the Pharisees said in the synod or the synagogue of the Jews, he would have agreed that Christ is a sinner. They, they bring him in and they say, give glory to God. It's like you know, they're making him um, say an oath to tell the truth. And before he says anything, they tell him, we know that this man is a sinner. Okay, what's your point? You're trying to present a case without even asking my opinion. They try to force this idea in his brain. We know that this man is a sinner. What do you say? He didn't agree with them, as you heard. I don't want to repeat the, the gospel again, but he didn't agree with them. He said, is he a sinner? I don't know, but I know one thing, that God doesn't listen to sinners. He doesn't listen to them. And we have never heard that someone who is a sinner open a born blind, the eyes of a born blind. So even him, he had a point to argue against those who are supposedly examining the scriptures every day. Every day. But they couldn't see. They were blind to the truth because of one major problem that they had. They were busy collecting glory from one another. They were seeking glory. What they were after was not God. It was their own ego. That's why God was gone a long time. When his son came to them, they couldn't recognize him. They were blind. It's, I can't unsee what St. Mary said to Elizabeth when she said he has sent away the rich empty. Those who are rich, he sent them away empty. Not rich in positions, but feeling full of themselves. The puffed heart, how can a puffed heart accept the faith? It can't. 
It cannot submit. This is the problem. All, oh, and this man, if he would accept their um, assumption that Christ is a sinner, and he would say, yes, he is a sinner. Now tell me, please, what would the miracle benefit him in any way? He would gain his eyesight, but his heart would be still blind. يعني أو بمعنى آخر يعني المعجزة كانت هتنفع بإيه ولا حد زي التاني you know the other guy who Christ also the paralyzed man who was sick for 38 years Christ told him do not sin again lest the worst come upon you and we know from the tradition that this man uh, we know actually from the Bible that he went and told on Christ that he's the one who healed him it's like throwing Christ under the bus, right? But we also know from the tradition that this man didn't really repent. He didn't. Nothing. But this, born blind, when he came second time to Christ and he met him, he worshipped in front of him. And that worship is a worship or um, the matanya that he did, the bowing down is a sign of worship to the Son of God. He said, I believe. And that is, that is the ultimate goal, right? Isn't that what we're here for? For our faith to grow? Our faith to grow every day? This is the ultimate goal. And everything that God does in our life is to help us in that route. This miracle of opening the born blind man is a wonderful miracle. But it would have no, have no value if it didn't change this man's life. Would have meant nothing to him if it didn't change his life. Same thing for us. Everything that God does for us, it is with the intention to talk to us and to deliver us the message that he loves us. His free gifts are irrevocable. His free gifts are without regret. He gives without expecting anything in return. All what he's asking for is your heart to follow him. May he give us the, the eyes that can see his light, the heart that can follow him, and the mind to accept that he is the one and only God. To him is glory forever and ever. Amen.